1,184 days. The length of time between Brand and Dashi Hotel's first and second major Call of Duty event victories. When young talent bursts emphatically onto the scene with an MVP trophy, continued dominance is the expectation. But this star's career quickly took a turn for the worse. This is the story of Dashi, hero to zero, and the long road back to hero once more. The year is 2017, and Dashi was looking to transition from competitive sniper to making a name in the search and destroy scene. After reaching out to already renowned S&D kid Illy on Twitter and being egoed a fair few times, Dashi finally got his shot to play with the big boys, and his talent was immediately recognized. Did Whatever. you tweet it out or he hit you up? Um, I tweeted out that I needed people, but like he just like. I, I egoed him a few times, you know. Yeah, yeah. But like, you gotta, well, you gotta check them. You know yeah, what I mean? Some, and then after, like, he hit me up, and I'm like, All right, let's give, it, like, let's play with them, you know. And like, he came out like beaming, like he was he came out different at tournament. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, this guy's nasty. Dashi was actually slightly older than the cream of the S and D crop at the time, beating Illy, Simp, and Selium to his 18th birthday, enabling him to compete in the official Call of Duty circuit. Known by professional players primarily for his reputation for playing with Illy, he was just old enough to compete in the last chance qualifier for the 2017 World Championship. But few were interested in his services, believing the skill he displayed online was only possible with a keyboard. Like, Ricky got dropped over Cloud9, I got dropped on EG, Dash just turned 18 and people were saying he was a keyboarder, and Donnie... Straight Rippin', a team of misfits, decided to give Dashi a chance and it didn't take him long to prove his worth. Well, I thought Ricky was going to be the one to engage, but Dashia snaps back all three. Give the man back-to-back -back aces. Middle lane, three kills already. There's the final one, 17 and three. Get him out of here. A standout 17 and three S&D performance helped secure World Championship qualification, where he finished a respectable top 16, taking the scalps of Tainted Minds and Evil Geniuses along the way. Proving his worth on a multitude of roles, Dashi was acquired by Generals Enigma 6 going into the World War II season, but failed to qualify for Stage 1 of the 2018 Pro League, despite performing far beyond the level of his teammates. A similar story repeated on complexity with Study, Fellow and Parasite until April that year, when an opportunity opened up in the professional league. Dropping everyone but their superstar talent, Cole recruited Sensa alongside Ricky and Blast formerly of Era Eternity, to inherit the CWL spot the organization was forced out of after failing to honor its commitments to players. Once the pros had a chance to play against Dashi on LAN, his ability was quickly discovered while slotting into an assault rifle role. Former S&D stars often struggle on their transition to the respawn modes, and while his sniper shot was renowned, Dashi did not disappoint elsewhere. Delivering a 1.20 KD over the 120 maps he played in the CWL, including a 1.27 in Search and Destroy, he was rapidly becoming the hottest prospect in the game. Dashi even tied the all-time S&D kill record at 20, but unfortunately, it never made it to broadcast. First event in World War II and I dropped 20 game five. I wish like that whole map was just broadcast. Yeah, that's typical. 20? Yeah, when I tied Krim's record. That's typical. With the Optic Dynasty collapsing during World War II, Formal had left for Luminosity, leaving Scump and Crimsix to build a new roster for Black Ops 4. Looking to young talents to rejuvenate Optic after a winless previous season, Dashi emerged as a primary target alongside TJ Halley. Bringing back three-time world champion Karma from his competitive hiatus to round out the squad, success was immediate and substantial. Despite huge pressure on Dashi to prove he was the real deal on this new generation of the biggest team in COD, he came out the gates hot. The Maddox and Paladin seemed almost tailor-made, and with the Tempest in hand, he was all but unstoppable. The Green Wall soon had plenty to cheer for, with Bruce chants echoing around the venue. Dashi explains. Um, it's like 8 o'clock. Woke up around like 6.45, 7 o'clock. Was not scrimming. And my voice is like really deep when I wake up, right? But I did my thing, got up, I ate, got on, and then my voice is deep, right? I'm like, yo, it's good. No bullshit. And then Nato was like, what the fuck? 
Uh, Nato is a Saints, by the way. He's like, yo, is that Batman? Is that Bruce? Dashi was the standout player at the game's first event in Las Vegas, posting an outrageous 1.44 KD on Optic's way back to the top, helping to complete some crazy comebacks along the way. 244. Optic now. They've got to be perfect. They've got to be perfect. Abizi's on the hill. He gets a couple more seconds, but Optic are there. Looking at Specialist. Placer's close. Placer is very close to another Tempest. Dashi able to find one. Oh! That's a lightning strike as well. Streaks now in. Streaks now in for Optic. Are you kidding me? A team kill does come through, but the lightning strike's gonna follow it up. What can he connect on? It's actually gonna pick up Scrub. He, he got two. Karma he got well. two of his teammates. Two teammates are gonna drop, but you still have the hero Crimson inside. His teammate there. They now just need 13 more points. Plenty of time to hold on. They're spawning out. The Tempest is in. Optic Gaming looks like they're gonna do it. It looks like they're gonna do it. Three seconds remaining. Get off the map. They've got it. The comeback is alive and well. Game one from Optic Gaming. But 2019 would not go to plan, as Optic consistently fell short of close rivals 100 Thieves and a United, while internal conflict began to develop. After a third place finish at Champs, their third such placement of the season, Crim6 was on his way out, but not without leaving some parting words. He described teaming with Dashi as babysitting, not impressed with his attitude towards practice and improving as a squad. Six. Going dark. The entire scene was flipped on its head when franchising came into effect ahead of the 2020 season. The 12-team Call of Duty League was born. Years of optic ownership struggles finally came to a head, with Immortals acquiring the brand from Infinite Esports, the entity to which Optic CEO Hex had rescinded majority ownership in 2017. Wanting no part of this Optic shell, Hex joined NRG as co-CEO, intending to create a new Call of Duty franchise. With all this chaos ongoing behind the scenes, teams were being formed with the arrival of Modern Warfare. While Skump waited for Hex to finalize his deal, Dashi was convinced to stay on the new Optic Gaming Los Angeles team owned by Immortals, believing that the Optic core would soon be joining him. By the time Chicago Huntsman was formed, it was too late for Dashi to join Scump and Formal on the NR Green Wall, despite his best attempts for a last minute trade. Like, you know what, like, obviously I do want to play for like you guys, and then when I found out, like, like that whole rumor of me trying to get traded was, it was actually real, like I actually- To like, compound like, Dashi's already mounting frustrations, he intended to be the main AR for OGLA's roster, which ended up featuring Slasher, one of the all time greats in the role. Often forced into an SMG position where he was rarely comfortable, the maturity problems raised by Crimsix began to manifest once more. Showing up late for scrims, barely calling out, just some of the issues Kenny explained after the season's conclusion. TJ Brandon showed up late almost like every other day, probably like a few minutes late, but sometimes it was OD. Now, no cap, not, not even capping. Like I said, I still want to play with TJ, but no cap, people show up late. Cool. It got to a point where like, I personally don't care for it. I'm not like big, like, oh my God, like, you showing up late, like, what you doing? Like, but Austin and John, Eric, not playing that. After a series of torrid placings and the worst individual performances of Dashi's career, he was benched by OGLA in early July that season, with former teammate Chino giving lack of effort as the primary driver. We felt like he wasn't really giving effort in practice. In spite of his generational talent, external factors had nullified Dashi's impact in 2020. He desperately needed to prove his championship winning potential once again before the hectic roster change period to follow. Still on the sidelines as OGLA faced Los Angeles Grillers at the 2020 World Championship, Kenny began experiencing connection issues associated with an alleged DDoS attack. With no warm up and barely any warning, Dashi subbed in for Game 5 Piccadilly SD delivering three crucial sniper kills in round 10 to help his team advance. Kills in this game. But there's Dashi, hits another one. Challenge me again, sir, I got a new angle. It's so much information, now gonna reposition top. Can he catch him off a bomb? No, it's Dashi. Hit another snipe as he's got three in the round. There it is, the kill is in for Optic. They're gonna get the series win. And posting one of the coldest tweets in COD history.
Black Ops Cold War signaled the return to four-player rosters in competitive. As Arcetes and Prasini departed the Huntsman, a spot became available for a flex player alongside Skump, Formal, and Envoy, for which Dashi was the obvious target. Rebranding to Optic Chicago after Hex reclaimed ownership of the Optic branding from Immortals, the team started out hot. Dashi quickly returned to superstar form in the early XM4 meta, only losing to the year's dominant team Atlanta Phase during Stage 1. Despite frequently impressing during the group stages, Optic consistently fails to make waves on tournament weekends. Placing fourth on three occasions, top six twice, and third only once, Dashi's team did not even make a single grand finals appearance all year. While the slaying power was evident, clutch factor and good fundamentals routinely fell short. Questions were already being raised around Dashi, now winless for approaching three years. Former teammate Crimsix made his opinion clear. Dashi should have been a top five player, but he did not play the game the correct way, prioritizing kills over team success. I think if Dashi played the right way, he, he could be top five. In my eyes, Brandon lost his team more maps than he won his team maps. Playstyle was far from the only problem discussed. After Envoy departed the roster, he revealed Optic's work ethic held them back from cracking the top teams. Explaining how certain teammates slept in late and lacked passion, he didn't mention Dashi by name, but many read between the lines. Who specifically cared less if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> All right, I'm, dude. Back I'm to not challengers. Gonna put with one you, man. It's everyone, dude. It was everyone. Right? Oh, okay. Generally speaking, we had very bad teamwork, super inconsistent. Um, to add on that, like I mentioned, like Draws really had a lot of passion. I think we didn't have enough passion this year um, from all of us, myself included. Um, I'm not throwing that on anyone specific. You know, I chalked a lot of scrims last year because teammates did not sleep. And I didn't yeah. go to sleep or went to sleep at 5 a.m. and then I'm an hour late or I'm chalking the whole first set, chalking both sets. And Dashi responded with a cheeky quip at the time, but Skump recently confirmed that Dashi was indeed the chief time torture. Really? Yeah. Last year? Oh my god. I couldn't pay him to be on time. Yeah. I couldn't give him an extra 20 grand a month to be on time. If Dashi wanted to get back to the top, he would have to turn a corner fast. Talent alone is insufficient in such a competitive league. If he couldn't mature quickly, his days representing Optic were numbered. Another new season, another new drama, with Optic on an organizational level. Splitting from NRG, Optic combined with Envy in an earth-shattering move in the esports landscape. This initiated a merge between Optic Chicago and the Dallas Empire. Optic Texas was born. 2020 MVP Shotzi and Dashi's old master Illy joined the roster, in a shakeup that could have seen Empire's Crimsix come along for the ride but the new duo were more bullish on Dashi's potential as the main AR. New coach Rambo explains. Um, and yeah, like like kind of what Seth said, at the, at the start it was kind of supposed to be the three of us and then Seth. Um, and then a lot of things happened last year with, with Porter on the team that weren't the ideal, I'd say in some ways. One with Porter last year that didn't really go through again. Um, and that's when the decision was made to kind of like move forward and, and have set and then um, obviously Brandon, great player, great mind and we were super, everyone was super excited about having him on board and things are, things are where they are now. Season's about to start. Things are looking good. Yeah, things are looking good. good. Now competing in the hard working, regimented structure that Rambo, Illy and Shotzi are known for, Dashi was more determined than ever to turn his career around. I just want to be... Uh, it sounds super cliche, but I just want to be the best teammate and the best player I can be for my teammates right now, just because this team has been a team that I've been the closest to pretty much ever, like I've ever had out of any team. Um, I just want to win with these guys. It's like a, a group of guys that I want to you know, go for it all with. So um, as of now, I just want to win for Optic. Because winning for Optic, I've done it once, and it's something that I'll truly never forget. So I'm just trying to do that again. On paper, this Optic roster arguably harbored the most talent since the Dynasty, and early online performances showed their elite potential. With Rambo not afraid to dish out fines for late appearances, Dashi's attitude was quickly back on track. His newfound maturity was followed by an improved playstyle, coupled with a revitalized willingness to win at all costs. Skump was even surprised at the rapidity of his rejuvenation. Well, I had faith in him, obviously. 
I mean, we wouldn't have brought him back to the team if we no, didn't have complete not. faith no, yeah. in oh, no, him to, to be focused. And I had complete faith in him. And he's he's honestly surprised me because I thought it was going to be more of a process, like a longer, like, just like a longer period. But he, right. like, instantly matured. Yeah, no, man, instantly. I'm not giving him a chance, to be honest. No, I'm not he, giving him a chance he's to actually, be he's been on top of his shit. However, success did not come easily. Following a surprising defeat to fierce rivals LA Thieves at the CDL's Kickoff Classic, Optic suffered two shock Game 5 Round 11 losses to London and Minnesota. Serving merely to light a fire under the team, Optic bounced back emphatically, beating Paris, Boston and Toronto with a 9-in-1 combined map count. Arriving at their home Major 1 firmly among the pack of favourites, they would need more than just crowd support to take the crown. Quickly dispatching of Seattle Surge, Optic faced 2021 World Champions Atlanta Phase on the main stage. Down 2-0 within 30 minutes, former lineups would have crumbled, but a dominant dashy performance on Tuscan Control opened the door to the reverse sweep. Try to lock it up. It looks like they're trying to line up Maze as Dashy's lining up. Shots, Bruce heating up. Glide. Six in a row, Glide looming. Can he find it? Got eyes on with vicious shots. Just trying to finish it. And it's one of the tougher kills in the game, but he's able to gun sell. Wow. Uh, I think you hold it right now. I mean, they have the advantage. Really, what you're trying to do here, if you're off, you text it. Oh, get very yeah, similar. And this Catholic. is not an easy map with the auto. Oh, I mean, now it doesn't it. matter what he has, Joe. It's nine in a row. The wind in their sails, Optic rolled through phase with a plum, dispatching them 6 0 in game five. Dashi didn't hesitate to let them know. It's Shachi as well. Zell though, trying to bring this back, trying to give them the main advantage. Nobody on the defuse as RC is going to have to check it. And on the peak, he gets picked. On the peak, he gets picked. Now you're looking at Sim working through the middle of the map. He's giving the call out. Oh, no. oh, and find no. the kill. They'd be a little bit nervous right now. It's all to the bottom. I don't know. I don't know. He, it no, is so no. close. Got it. I don't, I don't know. So. We got to go to the bottom. Go to so. the bottom. Show me the bottom. Show me the bottom. Wait, no. Talk to me, Miles. You look like Talk one of the most me. dangerous players on Tuscan right now. How the hell do you do it? I don't know. I think I just worked the angles good. I don't know. I just I got a good vibe on that map, so we'll, we'll try to keep it going. <laughs> it was an unbelievable run, man. I mean, you look in vintage form out there. You're looking like new levels every day. It is just ins it's incredible to watch. How's the practice been coming in the event? Uh, yeah, my teammates just make my job like super easy. I mean, I have three of the best players in the game, so it's just a matter of me just watching over them, picking up the right cuts. Rotating and uh, having some good vibes. Have some fun along the way. The job was not yet complete. The job's now finished. But a 3-1 triumph over London set up Optic's first grand final in well over a year. A rematch with FaZe beckons, which would put a slight dent in Dashi's ridiculous 1.44 KD heading into the finals. A back and forth affair spanning seven maps, Optic's respawn play was on another level while their search and destroy remained as disciplined as many Optic fans have ever seen it. Glory once more for the green wall. Dashi back on top after almost four years. First blood, now the three remaining members of Optic have to now contend with the full might of phase. But Shotzi! What was that angle? The bomb doesn't get planted! Scampi flies in! Shotzi on the outside! Abizi the last one up! And it's Dashi! Granted the MVP awards to boot, Dashi's resurrection arc was complete. Engrossed in a culture able to extract the best from his talent, with a mindset finally honed for success, Optic Texas will be tough to beat with Dashi holding the line. Can he maintain this level? How long will he take to win another championship? The next chapter is yet to be written. This documentary was made possible by Prize Picks, the home of daily fantasy. Pick over unders for the CDL, like whether Skump will get more or less than 59.5 kills over the first three maps. 
and pair your pick with another from Call of Duty or from any of the numerous other sports and esports where prize picks offer lines. Fancy your favorite NBA player scoring over 14 points? Add it to your entry. Select flex or power play depending on your confidence and enjoy up to $100 match deposit when you sign up to prize picks using the link in the description box below. Use code BREAKINGPOINT to let them know we sent you.